Hey guys, in this video, we're going to learn some statistics. We're going to be looking at ungrouped data and we're only going to cover range and interquartile range. So stay tuned. There are generally four measures of dispersion. Let's take a look at what they are. First, what are measures of dispersion? When we look at a set of data, let's take set A for example. When we arrange the data in a dot plot like this, this diagram here is known as a dot plot. It contains a scale of numbers and we insert the data accordingly. So here we have 0, 7, 8, 11. We have two 14s and so we stack them up like this and then we have 15 and 16. Now when we just look at this set of data, you can see that it is somewhat scattered. It is dispersed. Then we compare it to another set of data. Let's look at set B. Here we have 5, 5, 7, 8, 9, 9, 9, 10 and 11. So you can see this is a different pattern of scattering, of dispersion. So a measures of dispersion is a quantitative way of representing how dispersed the data are. Generally, there are four measures of dispersion. First is the range, interquartile range, variance, and standard deviation. In this video, I'm only covering range and interquartile range. Let's start with range. Range is the easiest measure of dispersion to calculate. It only involves the highest value and the lowest value. Range is calculated by subtracting the lowest value from the highest value. Let's look at set A. The highest value in set A is 16 and the lowest value is 0. So the range for set A will simply be 16 minus 0 and this will give us 16. As we can see from the calculation that we just performed, the range only takes into account two values in the whole set of data and therefore it might give an inaccurate picture of the dispersion especially when the highest value or the lowest value is quite far away from the group of data as is the case in A. This is not a very accurate representation of the dispersion of the whole set of data. For set B, the highest value is 11 and the lowest value is 5. So the range is simply 11 minus 5 which is 6. So when we compare range for set A and set B, we can see that the value of range for set A is much higher than set B and therefore we can conclude that the data in set A is much more dispersed compared to set B. We can already confirm this when we look at it visually. We can see that the data in set B is less scattered than the data in set A. Interquartile range also takes into account two values. However, interquartile range is more accurate than range. Let's find out why. Interquartile range is calculated by subtracting the first quartile from the third quartile. Now, what are quartiles? Let's learn using an example. Let's take a look at set A again. Now, before we can find the first quartile and the third quartile, we must first find the median. And the median is also the second quartile. The median is the middle value after the data in the set has been arranged in ascending order. The method of finding the median depends on whether the number of data is odd or even. For set A, as we can see here, there are 8 data. So the number of data is even. When the number of data is even, we can see visually that the middle value is here between the 4th and the 5th value. When finding the middle value, we cannot simply take the number of data and divide it by 2. For example, here we have 8 data. If we take half of n, n is the total number of data. So half of 8, it is the fourth value. The fourth value is 11. But 11 is clearly not exactly in the middle. The value in the middle is actually in between the fourth and the fifth value. So when we have an even number of data, the method of finding the median is to first get the value of 1 over 2 n and then adding that value to the value after it and dividing it by 2 to get the average. In this example, 1 over 2 n was 4. So in order to get the median or Q2 second quartile, we have to add the fourth and the fifth value and divide by 2 to get the average of the fourth and the fifth value to get the value in between the fourth and fifth value. Fourth value is 11, the fifth value is 14, and when we divide by 2, we get 12.5. So the median is 12.5. We don't actually need the value of the median to find the first quartile and the third quartile. 
we only need to know its position. Once we know the position of the median or the second quartile, we can divide the data into exactly two parts, like this. The first quartile is actually the middle value for the first half of the data when it's arranged in ascending order. And the third quartile is the middle value for the second half of the data. The method for finding the first quartile is the same as finding the median. However, we only look at the first half. For example, this is where the first quartile will be because this is the middle value for the first half of the data. And this is where the third quartile will be because this is the middle value for the second part of the data. So the first quartile will be the average of the second and third value, which is 7 and 8 divided by 2, which is 7.5. And the third quartile will be the average of 14 and 15 which is 14.5. Once we have Q1 and Q3, first quartile and third quartile, then we can find the interquartile range. Interquartile range is simply 14.5 minus 7.5, which gives us 7. So the interquartile range for set A is 7. What about when the number of data is an odd number? Let's look at set B. Set B has a total of 9 data. When we examine the set of data visually, we can see that the fifth value is actually the middle value. So when it comes to an odd number of data, the way to find the median will be to add the total number of data by 1 and then dividing that value by 2. So it is 1 over 2, n plus 1. In this case, n is 9, total number of data is 9. So in order to get the median, it will be 9 plus 1, 10 divided by 2, which gives us the fifth value. And of course, the fifth value is 9. And this is our median. So this works the same way when we are finding the first quartile and the third quartile as well. If the number of data in the first half of the set is an odd number, then we use this method as well, 1 over 2 n plus 1. But in this case, when we divide the data into two halves, again we get an even number of data on both sides. So we use the same method as before. Q1 will simply be 5 plus 7 divided by 2, which is 6, and Q3 will be 9 plus 10 divided by 2 which is 9.5 and the interquartile range will be 9.5 minus 6 which is 3.5 once again the interquartile range shows us that the data in set A is more dispersed than the data in set B that's it for this video guys I hope you've learned something if you have please don't forget to hit that like button it really does help to tell YouTube that you've enjoyed the video and YouTube will continue to suggest my video to others if you haven't subscribed yet please do subscribe I'll be producing at least one video a week I'll see you in the next video